Hello again. This is Matthew 1120 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Rectilinear Motion of Freely Falling Objects. As always, please be an active learner as you watch this video. The most familiar example of motion with nearly constant acceleration is that of an object falling under the influence of the Earth's gravitational attraction. Aristotle thought erroneously that heavy objects fall faster than light ones in proportion to the weight. But Galileo argued with this, and that was very courageous at the time, because Aristotle was a big deal, uh, that an object should fall with an acceleration as constant and independent of weight. Now, and it turns out that Galileo, according to legend, experimented by dropping musket balls and cannonballs uh, from the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now, this has been studied with great precision, and in fact, Galileo is right. All objects of a particular location fall with the same acceleration, regardless of their weight or size. And so we use this idealist model, and this is called free fall. And here you see a picture. This is a vacuum chamber where we're dropping a feather. And out here we're dropping an apple. And you see that they drop at the same, um, uh, they, they stay lined up with each other. So the feather, even though it weighs much less than the apple, they uh, fall at the same rate. The constant acceleration of a freely falling uh, object is called the acceleration due to gravity or the acceleration of free fall. We denote its magnitude with the letter G, and that's a lowercase g. At or near the Earth's surface, the uh, value of G is approximately 9.80 meters per second squared, 980 centimeters per second squared, or 32.2 feet per second squared, and you have to adjust your units based on the problem sometimes. Because G is the acceleration is a vector quantity, it's always a positive number. And on the surface of the moon, which has less mass, uh, G is um, 1.62 meters per second squared. And on the sun, which has much more mass, it is 274 meters per second squared. So typically, in free fall problems, we choose a coordinate system in which the positive y axis points upward. And that means that the acceleration due to y is going to be minus G, the minus sign reflected that the vector is pointing downward. We know this is true because if we throw an object up, it will eventually start coming down. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, the same equations, though, will all work if we change all of the x's to y's. And we take into account that uh, a sub y is minus g. And so that gives us the following equations for free fall. First one is v sub y is equal to v sub 0 in the y direction minus g t because the acceleration is minus g in the y direction. y is equal to y0 plus the initial velocity in the y direction times uh, t minus, and the minus sign is because this is minus g minus 1 half g t squared. And finally, v sub y whole squared is v sub 0 in the y direction whole squared minus 2g. Again, this is minus because g is in the negative direction, y minus y0. And note that g is 9.8 meters per second squared, as we said, and uh, that these are the position and velocities at time, t equal to 0. All right, let's look at uh, a couple of examples. So uh, here we're going to say a two euro coin is dropped from the Leaning Tower of Pizza, and it's dropped, it's not thrown down. It starts from rest and falls freely. What's the position and velocity after one second, two seconds, and three seconds? So here's the picture that we have, and everything's going in the y direction. You see it is in a line, so it is rectilinear motion. So we start up here. V sub 0 is 0 because we're just dropping it. This is time 0. And we start asking, what is the velocity at these various times? And so, and, and this is what's happening. And then we also see 
that this uh, keeps on going and eventually you uh, will hit the ground. I ran out of space here to show all of this. Okay, so here's what we have. Y then is equal to, and um, uh, what we're going to have is we're starting our coordinate system with the top of uh, the tower being zero. So you see we're saying y is 0 at the top. We wouldn't have to say that, but that's what we're saying here. So we just say y is equal to y0 is 0. And this is v0 times t, but we're dropping it. So that means v0 is 0. So the only thing we get is 1 half gt squared. And that's going to be 1 half. This is 9.8, and it is minus because it's going down, times t squared. Uh, so that is what um, uh, we get for uh, the, uh, uh, the position uh, of y. And the velocity then is going to be, uh, the initial one is uh, 0, so it's just going to be the acceleration times the time. So we'll plug in 1, 2, and 3 in there, and we will find that the results are minus 9.6 meters and minus 19 0.6, that's 19.6 meters, and minus 19.6 meters per second at t equal 2, and it's minus 44.1 and minus 29.4 meters per second at t equal 3. And the, at, at uh, uh, t equal 1, uh, we get that from uh, up here. So at t equal 1, uh, the answer was minus 4.9 meters and minus 9.8 meters per second. Again, the equations are the same. They're just in the vertical direction rather than the horizontal direction. Let's look at a more complex ca uh, case where a ball is thrown upward. Now we're at the top of a, a building and we're calling the top of the building zero. Again, it's arbitrary what we call this, we're calling that zero. So we throw something up. So it goes up for a while and then it starts coming down. Okay, so that's the more complex case. So the ball is thrown vertically upward. Even though it's moving upward vertically, it is in free fall because there's the only acceleration is gravity pulling down. So the equations we've been using all apply. So you throw a ball vertically upward from the flat roof of a tall building. It leaves your hand at a point even with the roof railing and with an upward velocity of 15 meters per second. This is positive going up. On a sway back down, it just misses the railing. So you want to find the position of velocity of the ball when time is one second and four seconds after it leaves your hand. You want to know the velocity of the ball when it is five feet above the railing. And you also want to know the maximum height that it reaches before it starts coming down and the time at which that maximum height is reached. Okay, so uh, this is kind of the scheme uh, that we have. And so we know that um, the velocity at time uh, v is equal to v0y plus a in the y direction times t. So it's going to be 15.0 meters per second minus 9.8 times t. That's 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, so, and the position is given by, and realize that we're calling this to be 0 to start with, so um, y0 we're calling 0. So y is equal to uh, v0t plus 1 half a in the y direction t squared. So we get 15.0 meters per second times t plus, and then this is going to be 1 half, but this is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared because it's going down. And we also know that uh, v sub y squared is going to be v sub uh, 0 in the y direction squared plus 2a in the y direction. That's y minus y0. And if we plug everything in uh, the way we have it, that is going to be 15 uh, plus 2. This is minus 9.8 meters per second squared times y minus y0. All right, those are the equations we have. So when we plug in t equal 1, uh, the first two equations tell us that y is plus 10 meters, and uh, the velocity at that time is plus 5.2 meters per second. It's still going up. So the ball is 10.1 meters above um, 
the origin and it has an upward velocity of um, 5.20. When it's 4, you plug in and you find that y is minus 24.2 meters per second, or meters, and w the velocity in y is minus 24.2 meters per second. So now it's going down and it's also 18 uh, meters underneath this. So at time equal 4, it's past its highest point and is 18.4 below the origin. Uh, and it has a downward velocity because it's moving downward at the time. Note, uh, to get these results, we don't have to find the highest point uh, it reaches or the time. But we can find the highest point uh, by, uh, we can set the velocity equal to zero, and, uh, and we can figure out what the highest point must be. And we continue doing that. So we set uh, this equal to the velocity then. Uh, let's see. When the ball is three, is five meters above the origin, uh, we set that equal to five. And we plug that into this third equation. And we find that the velocity is equal to um, 11 uh, uh, plus or minus actually 11.3 because we're solving a quadratic equation. Now we've got two values, one positive and one negative because it passes five meters above when it's going up and when it's going down. So we get an upward trajectory and a downward trajectory. The plus is on its way up and the other one is on its way down. And we set the velocity equal to zero for part C and uh, the velocity is uh, not momentarily zero, so we set the velocity equal to zero. You see it's going up, and before it starts going down, it's zero for an instant. That's what we want to uh, calculate here. So we set zero equal to the initial velocity. We're still using this equation. So zero is equal to the initial velocity squared minus, and this is twice, times the acceleration um, uh, times uh, y. And the maximum height then is solved by uh, solving for y. So we solve for y, and, and we can also find uh, the time when, uh, when that is equal to 0, 2. Uh, but here we'll solve for, uh, for y, and we find out that uh, a y was equal to 11.5 uh, meters. And the time is gotten by solving this equation, and the time is 1.53 seconds. Let's look at another problem. Uh, this is about a pop play. In a baseball game, a batter hits a pitched ball that goes straight up into the air. At the top of the motion, the ball is momentarily motionless. It's, it was going up, and it's motion, motionless for an instant, and then it starts coming down. At this point, uh, and it's a multiple choice. The acceleration is zero because the ball is motionless at that instant. The acceleration is zero because the motion is changing from slowing up to speeding down. C, uh, the acceleration is zero because at that instant the force from the impact of the bat is balanced by the pull from the earth. Or D, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, as the ball approaches its maximum height, its velocity is upward and positive. The velocity momentarily goes to zero, and the ball begins to move downward with a negative velocity. So the change in velocity um, uh, is continuous, therefore the acceleration is never zero, it's always changing. Uh, so that argument rules out A, B, and C, but is D correct? Well, gravity is a constant, uh, whether it's going up or going down, so the correct answer is D. And we have uh, a, a low stakes assessment for you also to, uh, to consider. A model rocket is fired straight up from the top of a 50 mil, mil, uh, meter tall building. The rocket has only enough fuel to burn for two seconds. But while the rocket engine is burning fuel, it does produce an upward acceleration of 50 meters per second. 
After the fuel supply is exhausted, the rocket is in free fall and just misses the edge of the building as it falls back to the ground. Ignoring air resistance, calculate A, the height above the ground and the velocity of the rocket when it runs out of fuel, B, the maximum height of the rocket, C, the time the rocket is in the air before it hits the ground, and D, the rocket's velocity the moment before it hits the ground. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. May God bless you all.